it's Rebecca and today is another book review day and this one is another late one this is my October book that I've been reading for the Wordy Birds reading challenge I know it's nearly December sorry I will leave some links down below in the description so you can find out about the Wordy Birds reading challenge but it's to read a book every month and each month has a different theme or category so the category for October I had to think about that for a second, was to read a book by somebody that you have met, or if you haven't met an author, somebody that you would like to meet. So I have been reading Humble Boy Bee by Ruth Dugdall, and I met Ruth five or so years ago at a festival, at a book festival, and I've kind of seen her a few times, she's written quite a few books, I've read a couple of them, so this is one of her more recent ones, so I will read you the blurb and then talk to you about the book. A Blur in the Sky a brick. No. A trainer, red, falls into the water. There seems to be a scuffle, a hand grabbing at the dangling child. Then, with the awfulness of inevitability, the hanging child drops. Gravity takes him. A child is killed after falling from the Humber Bridge. Despite fleeing the scene, two young brothers are found guilty and sent to prison. Upon their release, they are granted one privilege only, their anonymity. Probation officer Kay Austin is responsible for Humber Boy B's reintegration into society, but the general public's anger is steadily growing, and those around her are wondering if the secret of his identity is one he actually deserves to keep. Kate's loyalty is challenged when she begins to discover the truth of the crime. She must ask herself if a child is capable of premeditated murder, or if there is a greater evil at play. This was a really, really good book. I didn't want to read it when I first looked at it. I kind of thought, oh, I don't, doesn't really sound like my kind of thing. One thing that Ruth does is she takes real crimes that have really happened and kind of manipulates them and turns them into her own story. So this story was inspired by the Jamie Bulger case. And if you live in England, you will know about this. It happened, oh, I'm going to say in the 90s, and I do apologise if that's wrong. A little boy was taken from a shopping centre. He was only two or three years old, Jamie Bulger, by two older boys. And these boys abused him, beat him, oh, just horrible, horrible things. And eventually he died, this little boy. He'd been taken from his mother. And the two boys that killed him got sent to prison. And when they were released, they were given new identities. And the whole country was in uproar because... It's just, oh, the whole thing is just too horrible to even get your head around. It, yeah, I just, I can't, I can't even. If you want to look it up, feel free. I'm not going to leave any links to it, I'm, but just, yeah, have a look if you want to. So, there is a young boy, and he's with two of his friends, kind of. And they're playing up on, on the bridge, and a father and a daughter are down in the river fishing and they see the boy fall and it later transpires that he was pushed and these two brothers get sent to prison. So the thing about these books is it's not about who done it or trying to work out who the criminal is or all this kind of stuff. It's the crime has happened, you found the guilty party and this is what happens afterwards because Ruth Dugdall used to be a probation officer so her main character Kate Austin is a probation officer which is a different twist on, on the general crime novel and we meet one of the brothers, Ben, that's his new name, his new identity, who has been released from prison after serving time for killing the young boy. And it's about his, about him trying to get back into society. Well, get back into a society that he doesn't know. He went to prison as a child and he's come out as an adult and he has absolutely no clue about what to do. He's given a flat in Ipswich. It's completely empty. He's given a little bit of money. And he doesn't know how to spend it. He doesn't know that he needs to buy plates and cups and cutlery and clothes. And he goes to a little supermarket, like a little co-op. And he buys, uh, I think it's a Sharon fruit. No, the star fruit. The star, the star fruit. Because he doesn't know what it is and he doesn't understand how the world works. And I went into this ready to hate the children that killed the little boy. Ready to hate them, ready to believe that they were evil, that they did something really horrific because they're inherently evil. And I came away 
not thinking that. And I think we are all always so quick to judge. And I'm not saying that they were good children. And I'm not saying the children in the Jamie Bolger case were good children. I'm not saying that at all. But there's always two sides to a story. And I think sometimes we get so manipulated by the media, by the press, by people who like to vilify other people, that we don't actually see the truth. And I know for a fact this isn't a direct replica of the Jamie Bolger story. Like I say, it was just the inspiration for it. But Ben, the boy that gets punished the most, isn't necessarily the guiltiest of them all. It's just how circumstances have fallen. And it's a really, it's quite an exciting read because you, you're living with Ben, you're living with him struggling to get a job, live a life where he has to keep his past a secret, but that's all he's known. He doesn't know who Ben is. He doesn't know how to do all the normal things that people do in society because he's not grown up that way. And you do start to feel very sorry for him, especially when you learn more and more about the backstory. And one great thing about this is you jump from the present to the past and kind of in between. So you spend a lot of time with Ben in the present. You spend a lot of time with the children in the past. You spend some time with Kate, who is trying to help Ben rehabilitate himself. And you spend some time with the dead boy's mother, who is trying to find her son's killers. And each chapter kind of is from the point of view of a different person and a different time period. And it is really interesting how the story builds and how you are led down one path and you have this view of the character and then you read a couple of chapters on and then your, your view changes. And I like books like that. I like that I went into it already prejudging the murderers. I already judged that they were wrong, that they deserve their punishment, that they're evil, all this kind of stuff. And I came away not agreeing with my initial self which is really really good so it is well worth reading if you are the kind of person that makes snap judgments which I think we all are and it's very exciting it's very sad it is sad it's horrific it takes you I don't want to say a roller coaster of emotions because that's such a cliche but it does it takes you all over the place and makes your mind kind of dart from judgment to judgment yeah oh I really really enjoyed it really liked it I've got a few of her other books I am going to read at some point eventually but for um for this one I would I would certainly recommend it it is very very good so if you'd like to hear any of my other book reviews then please subscribe to my channel I put videos out when I can and when I remember and when I've got time so if you are interested in books or reading or writing or anything like that then please subscribe and I will see you soon have a good day